Welcome back to the RMS 3.0 class for the contractor. This is Chapter 3. Now that you've successfully downloaded, installed, and imported your contract into RMS, it is time to begin familiarizing yourself with the system. In Chapter 3, you will learn the Prime Contract Selections form and Contract Selection screen, how to add favorite contracts, contractor action items, the data grid, uploading attachments, and electronically signing Word or PDF documents. On this screen, you'll see a list of prime contractors you're working for. Now, in our example, we only show one prime contractor. The more prime contractors we work for, the larger this list gets. To select the prime contractor, you just need to double-click the name and you'll be taken to the page of contracts under this contractor. This is what the list of contracts looks like. Now, locate the contract you want to work on and double click it. If you have several contracts on this screen, you can save yourself some time using the Favorites and Recent tabs. Once you mark a contract as a favorite, it will populate and remain in the box to the left until it's unmarked it as a favorite. You can do this with as many contracts as you like. The Recents box on the right will show the four most recent contracts you've opened. So if you have several prime contracts here that you don't want to scroll through, these boxes at the top can be useful. Let's move on and learn how to mark a contract as a favorite. To mark a contract as a favorite, you will have to double click and open the contract. Here, we've selected the Wideband Satellite Communication Center. Once you double click the contract, it will open and look similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now. However, the image will be different. If you look at the top right side of the screen, you'll see a star and mark as favorite next to it. If you click on the star, the contract will now be available in the favorites box next time you log in under this prime contractor. You can do this now by clicking the back button, which saves any changes you've made. Another thing you can do from the contract selection screen is export the contract information. Just select the contract and click Export to export data to Excel or a PDF. You can also sort data by clicking on the funnels you see here. And finally, you can locate a contract with the search box by typing in the contract name. If you start typing the contract name, this field will automatically populate with the contract. Here we have a contract opened. Your screen will look like this. The image, of course, will be of your project and not this one. The green boxes you see here are known as action items. These action items are considered an important to-do list for both the government and the contractor. Red means that there are action items present of high importance. Orange means that action items are present of medium importance. Yellow means there are action items of low importance. And green indicates that there are no action items. Strive to keep these boxes green at all times. As a quality control manager, always strive to ensure these action items are addressed. They have been provided by the government as a tool to help ensure you don't hit any speed bumps during the production of your contract. One thing you'll realize is the action items on this screen aren't used on all contracts. In fact, the action items on the contract menu screen are used very rarely. I just don't want you to be alarmed if you never see changes in this area. We'll go into where you will be looking up action items if this section is not utilized in a later chapter. Chapter Back in the Contract Selection screen, we said you could filter and sort all data. This is true on all data grid screens. Just look for the filter icon. If you click the filter, which looks like a funnel, this screen will pop up and you can sort and filter by most anything you want. Once you've set your filter, you'll see that any values greater than zero will show up in the filtered data grid. We also previously touched on the search box. Each data grid within RMS has a dynamic search box. Just start typing in the search box and the filtering starts immediately. In this example, we were typing the word SEAL. As you can see, two features of work popped up. 
both with the word seal in them. Now let's take a look at attachments. Here we are at the warranty information screen within RMS. This is not the only screen that allows attachments, this just happens to be a good one to use as an example. Warranty information often comes in several documents, so uploading them all into one folder makes your job so much easier. Many file forms can be uploaded into the Documents Packages folders. Images, Documents, Audio Files, Word Files, and PDF Files can all be uploaded into this package. Just think about a filing cabinet. You can put any number of documents inside of a folder, and you can have many folders inside of a cabinet. The document package is the cabinet. When clicking Add, it creates a folder that collects documents. Clicking Add will add a new attachment package. Clicking Edit allows the user to edit or add files to an existing package. And Clicking Delete does not allow the contractor to delete a package. Only the government can delete the package. However, the contractor can delete attachments within the package. This screen shows attachments within a document package. The contractor can edit both the document title and the description of the attachment even if the file has already been uploaded. You can also drag and drop attachments in the All Attachments screen. Once you are done adding attachments, click the Back button to save. Within the Document Package screen, you can drag and drop attachments. This will import files from your computer and add them to the Document Packages folder. You can export documents if necessary. When appropriate, you can sign Word and PDF documents prior to submitting to the government. And remember, always click the Back button to commit the changes to RMS. Now let's touch on dragging, dropping, and adding documents. To drag, drop, and add a document, keep RMS open and on your computer, go to File Explorer. Find the file you want to upload and select it while holding your mouse button down. Then drag it to the button called Drag and Drop. Release your mouse button and your file should upload. You can do the same with multiple files. Just select all the files you want by holding your Shift key down as you click each file, drag them to the Drag and Drop folder, and release. Again, click the Back button to save or commit the action. To edit an attachment, the user can update the document title or the attachment description. Just remember to click the Back button to save all changes. Only the government can delete packages. However, the contractor can delete attachments within the package. Just click the attachment you'd like to delete, confirm you want to delete the package, and click Back to commit. Hi, it's Alex from Titan University, the leader in government construction, safety, quality control, and environmental training. We hope you enjoyed the Module 3 preview of the course Mastering RMS. Please like, share, and comment if you did. We'd really appreciate it. If you want to learn more or get your Mastering RMS certificate, head on over to Titan University by clicking the link below. Our courses are affordable and easy to comprehend. Plus, we also have course materials you can download to assist you. The Mastering RMS course has several modules. But no worries if you can't finish it all in one sitting. You can take as long as you like to complete it. If you are or want to be a quality control manager for construction, this Mastering RMS course just might be for you. Please don't forget to like and share. We hope to see you over on Titan University.